Hello and welcome to Workout Wednesday 2021 Week 14 Solution Guide. So in this week's challenge, um, we wanted to build a market basket analysis where the, a user could actually see what other subcategories are purchased when someone purchases accessories um, on their second purchase. So this is kind of a pretty powerful, um, you know, when you're trying to figure out well, what products should I, should I bundle together? Um, so if, you know, customers already tend to purchase, you know, uh, let's say in this case, uh, paper when they purchase accessories, then that could be a good bundle um, combination idea. Or if you're trying to figure out pricing, you know, if they're going to purchase them together anyway, maybe we shouldn't discount both of them. We could discount one, but not, not both, right? Because they were going to purchase the other one at full price, generally speaking. And then we also wanted to see, you know, which of these combinations were actually profitable. And then the other piece, just, you know, because I love parameter actions, is I wanted to kind of see, like, of course, this is the best way to kind of, uh, you know, showcase this type of information um, with the horizontal bar chart. But let's say I wanted to see a glorified pie chart, aka a tree map, with the click of a button, I could change um, the and swap that chart out for uh, a tree map. So let's figure out how we actually build this. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect to data. And we're using a sample superstore that's you know directly out of uh, Tableau. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I am going to copy and paste, you know, this, this is you know for the toggle. And so I um, was heavily inspired by uh, a solution video that Luke put together on his data coach stuff on how to create a toggle. So, um, you know, just pretty simple like approach. So, you know, we're just gonna take that and we're just gonna control V if you're on a PC and that brings all that data in and so all that data is like two data points. Um, and I'm just gonna rename this from clipboard underscore blah, 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 blah to something that kind of makes a little bit more sense to me. So we'll just call this toggle input. Fantastic. And so what the first thing I want to do is I want to create a parameter, right? So the parameter is essentially like when I, when I, you know, make a selection, show me this chart, um, or, or not. So we're going to create that parameter and we'll call this, um, toggle the chart and we'll make this, oop. We'll make this a Boolean. And if it's true, so if someone has made the selection, show me that tree map. And, but by default, you know, show me the, you know, the oldie but goodie, the, uh, the horizontal bar chart. Um, then I'm gonna just create a couple of quick calculations um, to kind of get this stuff working. So if we wanna change the chart type. So if it's the parameter, and toggle and awesome and then this would be quick ones super complicated <laughs> we'll just do one true one for false and we'll have one last field which is toggle the chart type. So if, so if it is the actual selection that someone has made, then give it a one, else zero. And cool, so we built all our calculations, so let's go ahead and build the biz. So I'm just gonna right click, drag this over to show me my values. It looks like they're all showing up. I want this to be expressed as a line nice little nifty line there nothing too special but now i got to bring over um you know like basing the user selection so i'm going to show that parameter just so you guys can kind of see this uh, in action um so i'm going to bring this over and i'm just going to drop it into the columns area so it's over here so i know i need to uh, make this a dual axis 
because all of this is happening in the same area. But it looks like um, I have some axis synchronization issue going on because my zero is over here and my other zero is over here. So we'll just right click one of the axes and we'll synchronize that bad boy. So it should all be um, where we expect it to be. So I know that I do not want measure names to be my color here. So what I actually want to be my color is, um, you know, if someone has selected that one or a zero or the bar or, uh, or tree map. So we're going to bring that over. I'm going to change this to actually be a discrete So if it's, you know, if it's defaulted, just, you know, show up as gray, right? Nothing too fancy. Um, but if it's not, right, so if it's that one, then I want you to show up um, as, let's pick a, a cool little color. As that, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the chart type to be circle, because I want a bigger circle here. Um, and maybe I want a little border around that guy, just a tad, and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Cool. And then I will get rid of my headers and do a little, some quick little formatting here. Get rid of the zeros, no tick marks, no dividers. Cool. So now we have a working toggle. So when I kind of move back and forth, I, this is what I get. And I still see a line there. So I'm going to make sure I don't have any. Oh, yep, yeah, has some little ghost grid lines there. Cool. So that's the toggle. So we're all done with that. And I'll show you how all this stuff, um, you know, kind of works together. So now let's start building out our market basket analysis. So we'll be leveraging the, the sample superstore stuff. So let's click into that actual data set. And so the first thing I want to do, I always start with parameters uh, or creating the parameters that I need, just, you know, it's out of habit. Um, but, you know, definitely, you know, feel free to kind of, you know, modify uh, as your heart's content. And so I'm going to just call this um, selected subcategory. And this will be a string. We're just gonna add this value from the subcategory field because I don't feel like typing all of this and you guys probably don't feel like looking at me type all that. Um, and so now we have our parameter and I'm just gonna go ahead and just show that because I like to see what, what's happening when I'm building out things. All right, so our, um, our order or our requirement is we need to see only the second um, we just need to see only just the second order. So it's super easy to find the first, the max and the min and all that kind of stuff using LODs. But what about like something on like the second order or whatever, right? And so what I want to do is, is you kind of kind of have to have to step through these LODs. Uh, there's only two of them. So it's not, you know, uh, it will be light work once you see how this is. So the first thing we need to do is find the date of the first order. So we want for each customer. So we want to look at for each customer, we want to just find the minimum order date. Excellent. Now we want to find the second order date. So I bet you're like, well, how do I find the second order date? Uh, it's kind of a cheat, but you know. All right, so we're going to fix on the customer name and we want to have a min, but we want to have a conditional statement. So only bring back the date if the order date is higher or more recent than the first order date that we just created. So if that is true, then bring me back the order date. Otherwise, just end that. And we'll just get our little squigglies there. All right, cool. So now we're like, we just got to do a true false because I'm going to throw this stuff into the filters. And I just want to know, is this, you know, is this the second purchase date? So is this So 
So if the order date is equal to my second order date, then true. So yes, it is. False. False. End. Alrighty. And we're just going to throw this in here. And we are going to set this only to true because that's all I want. Awesome. Okay, so then the next thing I have to do is I have to find find some way to identify every subcategory except the one that the user has actually selected, right? So it's kind of a backwards way of how it works, but it'll make sense once we um, kind of build this out. So we want to say additional subcategories or just not the, all right, um, every subcategory labeled except for the one that was selected. All right, so we're just going to say if the subcategory does not equal the parameter or the user selected um, subcategory parameter, then bring back the subcategory name else label it in a and then end awesome so let's bring that into the view and see what it looks like okay so it looks like everything is labeled except for what is this in a that's actually your accessories now i bet some people are like well why don't you just you know hard code you know and list the one that you won't, don't you know, want in, in a part of it. So if I did that and I just pressed exclude on that one, then it would be hard coded. And, and as soon as someone selected this, you know, you know, a different subcategory, that NA, which bounces around, would mean something else. And so this way I can, this be, this is dynamic to whatever the user is selecting. Um, and the fun, cool thing is I, uh, found this, you know, methodology actually through Anthony Smokes, uh, market basket analysis like v2 video which is awesome so check it out i think i linked to it in the the challenge um, page so what we're going to do is we're just going to exclude na because i don't want to see anything uh, i don't want to see the you anything information for what i've actually selected i only want to see things uh, for every other subcategory and so I'm just going to bring over just to see which one is, you know, largest to smallest one. So I just want the distinct number of orders associated with it because I want to see the level of frequency. So it seems like for accessories, binders are, you know, but we're missing some stuff, right? Because while this is the second order, this is just looking at the actual purchase, you know, frequency of these things, right? It's actually not putting this into combination with orders where accessories were were purchased how many also included binders because you'll see that when i select all this stuff right not a lot of stuff like binders is still on top so it's something a little funky so we have a couple of steps to do so the first thing i want to do is create a set of just orders that um, have accessories on them right um to be able to like kind of filter down to just that stuff, right? And so um, what I have to do is I have to create one additional calculated field um, just to see if it actually matches the selection. And if it does, then, you know, give me a count of one. And if it doesn't, then don't, you know, don't give me any values or give me zero. So if the subcategory is equal to the user selected, so the selected subcategory, then give me one, else zero, end. Awesome, and so now I'm gonna create that set I was just talking about, so we're just gonna right click into that, create that set, and I want to use all, and I wanna have it as a condition, and I wanna see if it matches that selection, and I want it everything kind of greater than or equal to one, right? Awesome, and I'm gonna actually throw this into my filter. So now you can see, um, now this only features, um, you know, this only features orders, second orders, 
where um, you know accessories were purchased, and then also paper and also binders, so on and so forth, right? Um, so that that's kind of a, a cool little distinction there. But we're not done. We have to figure out because now it looks nice, kind of. We got a little bit of formatting to do. We need to figure out if it's actually profitable, right? Because that's how I think we had uh, done our, our color coding. So is it profitable? And this will be a simple one. So if the sum of profit is less than zero, then no. That's true. End. Right? I'm going to find that. And I'm actually just going to throw that into color. And not exactly what I wanted to go for. So we're going to update these colors. So if it's if it is profitable, I want gray. And if it's not, I think I want to draw attention to it. And um, we'll just find some fun little orange. Um, and so that's basically the chart. So we'll do a couple of little formatting updates, but essentially this is how it works. And so what I'm gonna do is format, I'm gonna get, oh, it's on the wrong, wrong one. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that because since we already have row labels, and this looks pretty good. So when I select, let's say art, now I see that binders are often purchased with art, but not very profitable. But I want to add a little bit more detail to um, this information just, you know, in the tooltip, similar to what we, we had there. And I wonder if profit ratio, there we go. And we'll just say sales, profit, profit ratio. And we'll just update the formatting of this to be expressed as a percentage. All right, so that's our bar chart. And then we need to make a, a heat map, or not a heat map, I'm sorry, a tree map. And so of course we can go through all of this all over again, or we can just copy this and convert this into a tree map using our show me area so we got to do a little bit of formatting here um similar to like i gotta find the profitable but the cool thing is it kind of a lot of this carries over so not a big deal i don't want this to be in the in the text um All right, so we now have our, our, our tree map, but I think I wanna make it look exactly like the solution for the most part. So I'm going to add over my order, my count of orders, cause I want that to kind of show in the view, but look a little bit different than that as defaulted. So we're just gonna put a little bar there. Oops. Perfect. All right. So then, um, so now we have our, our tree map um, and our bar chart. So we are solid. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to kind of have that fully interactive experience. Um, we want to have that ex interactive experience. So I bet a, a number of you are like, well, how do I do that, right? And so we're going to bring this over to our dashboard and I'll show you how to do that. So in order to kind of initiate the tree swap, we have or the map or the chart swap, we have to do two things. First, we have to create a, a horizontal container 
and put both of those charts in there. And then when one of the parameters, uh, you know, or one of the selections are made, then that basically causes all of the data to disappear from the other um, view. So let's, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to our nifty uh, toggle input. And so I just want to show you how this works. Um, so we're going to just show it. Um, and so I'm going to bring this over. And I only want um, this to show. Clearly I'm clicking buttons. Oops. All right, so when this is false, so meaning when like, you know, someone uh, just wants to see the default and not the tree map, um, this will show up as false. And that means show the bar chart. Of course I unchecked everything. So, same thing with this. And only show up, and let's get our toggle, see how that works. Show it. I don't know why I'm just clicking on stuff randomly. So it's doing as expected, and so when this is true, I want it to show up. And if it's nothing, then don't show up. So perfect. So this will only populate when it's true and it will not populate when it's false. So we're gonna get our horizontal container we're going to drop our bar chart in there. We're going to take this guy out of the container. This vertical container, make sure it's not. I just have. Uh, there we go. It looks like I have it backwards. So, well, that's a quick fix. All right, so now it should disappear when we have it. And then we're just gonna do some quick little format magic. Get rid of these titles. fit this entire view. Same thing with this. All right, so it will only show this and we got to figure out what's happening here. Ah, it's not in the same container. I was like, that's strange. There we go. So now it will show up in the entire container. And so then we just need to do some quick little, oh, and uh, I'm just going to do some a quick little format get rid of some of this extra stuff. And obviously I don't want this uh, to populate, um, you know, or force the user to have to select a drop down menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring over our toggle, right? And so, um, and we're going to create a parameter action around that. So we're just going to go to dashboard action um, and then parameter. And so when someone selects the toggle, I want you to change that one. Hmm, we gotta figure out what's happening, why it won't. Because I should be seeing that. So 
All right, so I'm seeing like this field, it's empty, it says none, but I know I should be able to control it. So what this tells me is that I need to add the field that um, I created, which is changing the chart type actually to the toggle. So let me check and make sure it's, uh, it's in there. So when I go to check all of this, um, I'm seeing that I should see that, but I didn't, so I didn't throw it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into the detail area. So then just for good measure, throw all that stuff in there. And so when I go back to my dashboard, I should be able to see that selection. Oh, and there I have all of the fields because it was, you know, you have to make sure that it's actually into uh, the actual chart that or view that you're wanting to focus on. So that being said, so when I select this, all right, it works as designed. Perfect. So now I don't need to force my users to use any kind of drop down menu. I can just use that toggle. And so just for good measure, um, because we want to have a title to this, and I'm going to go find it and just for the sake of time, put that in there. All right, and I'm a, there we go. We're just gonna make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna give this a title. We'll say select chart type and format this a little bit. I think it was like light gray and we'll just make sure that this is not set to anything. Oops. And there we go. So now when I toggle back and forth, I can now see which ones and what type of chart that I want to see, as well as um, popular product combinations. So that is the solution video for week 14. And, you know, just kind of some troubleshooting thrown in there, some, you know, stuff that typically gets, um, you know, happens with parameter actions, just some like, you know, little dips or whatever. But um, as you can see, um, pretty easy peasy. Thanks.